Hello, my name is Tony Felici, and I'm the senior pastor here at Holiday Park United Methodist Church in Plum Borough, where Christ is King, the Holy Spirit inspires, people's lives are being transformed on a daily basis, all to the glory of God. And we're so glad that you have joined us for this broadcast today on Cornerstone TV's Faith and Family Channel. Won't you join us to worship our Lord? All our news and activities, current events, are on our Facebook page or our website. Please go there for the most current information. And here we go. On July 11th, following the 10 o'clock service around 11.30-ish, you are invited to Wesley Hall to celebrate our time and memories with uh, Dottie and uh, Tony uh, over the past eight years they've been here. Uh, you must RSVP to the church office, that phone number there, to Melanie Hansen if you are going to come to that. Uh, summer school, of course, is in session now. Please volunteer if you can. All materials are provided for you. There is a sign-up sheet up there in the lobby. Our Vacation Bible School, uh, J July 26th to the 29th, a four-day event. Registration is online only. Again, you can go to our Facebook page or our website uh, to register your children. Please do that. Well, I may be the second to say Happy Father's Day to all of you who are fathers out there or expecting to be fathers someday. Uh, Happy Father's Day. And how many grandparents do we have here? Father, uh, grandfathers, okay? And how many great-great-grandfathers? Great-great. or great-grandfathers. Great-grandfather and great? Legacy. That's what it's all about. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh God, in mystery and in silence, you are present in our lives, bringing new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, and growth out of difficulty. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives. Amen. Would you please stand with me for our morning uh, prayer? Almighty God, in your keeping there is shelter from the storm, and in your mercy there is comfort for the sorrows of life. Hear now our prayer for those who mourn and are heavy laden. Give to them strength to bear and do your will. Lighten their darkness with your love. Enable them to see beyond the things of this mortal world the promise of the eternal. Help them to know that your care enfolds all your people that take refuge and strength in you and that underneath you are everlasting arms. Amen. As you're standing up already, our first hymn this morning is Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Welcome all of you. Well, typically I have some contraption or setup that I bring with me um, to show you. But you know, I was thinking and praying about Father's Day. And I was looking at some things online and thought about all the typical cliches. I thought, well, I could dress up like a cook because, you know, my last name is Cook and I could have all kinds of aprons and stuff on, and I thought, well, not every dad's a cook, right? So that would be kind of leaving people out. And so I was thinking about all these other things, and I thought, I'd have to bring a whole truckload of stuff in here to represent all the different dads and all the things that they do. 
So I thought maybe, right, I thought maybe we could point to some things to show how gifted our dads are. That might be a better thing. So how about we find our heads? Aren't our dads very smart, right? So our dads do lots of fun things at work. They solve lots of problems. They solve problems at our house. They do lots of interesting, smart, fun things that, boy, I can't even figure out. And then how about our mouths? Can you find your mouth? Where's your mouth at? Oh my goodness. We have dads that are so talented with talking, like Pastor Tony and Mr. Tom. They do talking for a living. There's lots of people that do talking for a living. Even the ones that you see that are dads at the drive-thru that do their work there, they are talkers for a living. And oh my goodness, look at your hands. Show me your hands. Don't we have dads that are very talented with your hands? I know your dad's very talented with his hands, right? He does construction. Oh my goodness, there's dads that do lots of things. We have dads that are paramedics in this church, that are doctors, all the way down to builders and cooks and chefs and all of those things that do so many interesting, cool things with their hands. So I would have had to have brought a whole truckload of things in to show how talented and gifted our dads are. And we're so grateful for them. But the number one thing our dads do for us is they love us, don't they? They love us in all kinds of cool ways. Not only hugs. Can you give yourself a hug like your dad gives you hugs? Not just hugs or maybe pats on the heads. A lot of times dad, dads like to do pats on the heads, right? Your dad, you do that to your dad now too? Maybe when you were little you did. Mm -hmm. That's right, head pat for safety. That's awesome. Well, we show our dads love and they show us love back but they're also providers. They also give us safety. They also take us places and do fun things with us. So they show us love in all those ways. And you know what that reminds us of? Is God's love for us. They show us how all the many, many, many ways that God loves us and takes care of us. So we are so, so grateful for our dads and dad figures in our lives today. Our grandparents, maybe you have a special neighbor or someone close to you in your life that shows you what it's like to be a really good dad and a father. And our dads lead us to God by giving us such a wonderful example. So can we give our dads a hip hip hooray? Do you think you can be loud this morning? just like we did with our moms. Do you think you can yell today for our dads? Can we say hooray on the count of three? Can you do it? All right, I'm gonna count. We're gonna see how this goes. All right, ready? Can you be really loud on three? Ready? One, two, three. Hooray! Hooray! All right, hip hip hooray for our dads. All right. Happy Father's Day, everyone. We're going to head out this way. Thank you so much. We're headed down to Sunday school. I don't care how late you stay out. Stay out as late as you want. You want to borrow the new car? You want to borrow my credit card? Kids today, they really have it rough. I have no idea where we are or where we're going. I mean, when I was their age, Life was easy, super easy. Why haven't you gotten a tattoo yet? How come you don't have any piercings yet? Yep, we're lost. We are completely lost. Ooh, sports. It, it, just do whatever the mechanic says to do. Vehicle maintenance is completely overrated. Look, whatever the mechanic is asking, just pay him. Pay him whatever he wants. I wish they had soap operas at night. I like that boy. You should date him. You should date him immediately. Well, what about the creepy guy with the motorcycle? He's cute. Yeah, sure, spring break in Tahiti sounds fun. Hey, make sure you get all your video games done before you start your homework. You don't have to pass all your classes. What? You have a project due tomorrow and you've known about it for four weeks and you haven't started yet? 
Sweet! Doesn't anybody want to know if we're there yet? Remember, if you need anything between midnight and 4 a.m., please come wake me up. Hey, I'm on the phone. Could you bring the baby over and let him climb all over me? Hey, hey, can you please turn that music up? Well, we just stopped for lunch 10 minutes ago, but yeah, let's stop again. I never have trouble with my toddler. I never have trouble with my teenagers. I never have trouble with my adult children. You know, she's right. We are ruining her life. Yes, more homework to correct. All right, whining. Yay, tantrums. Hmm, vomit. We just really need to spoil these kids more. Sorry, buddy. I don't know any good jokes at all. You're 16. You pretty much know everything now. I think 18's a great age to get married. Okay, remember, make sure you turn on all the lights before you leave the house. Hey, could you leave the front door open for a couple hours? Thanks. Whoa, money really does grow on trees. I wish. I need one of those trees. At this time, it gives me great privilege and honor to invite uh, baptism up. Uh, Athena is coming up for her baptism. Come on up. James, Jessica. And remember, these beads are for you to take as a remembrance of this day. And you've done this before, so you know the drill. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and we're given new birth through water and the Spirit of God. And all of this is offered as God's gift. It's offered to us without a price. So on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. If so, please say, I do. I do. I do. do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they might present themselves? If so, please say, I do. I, I do. do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, please say, I do. I do. There's an important line in there that I want to emphasize, and I do this most of the time. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace? We, we, come, we come to the throne of grace not by our good works. There's nothing that we can ever do or buy or, or manufacture on our own to be able to come into his presence, but we're invited, and that's a gift of grace. It's a free gift, but he wants us to receive it, and you're receiving it for your child today. So we, we say, add a boy, add a girl. That's, that's good stuff. So, well, can I have her? Yeah. We haven't we haven't been doing this for a while. You're beautiful. Isn't she beautiful? It's Jean is the middle name, right? Jean is the middle name. Athena Jean Baker. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and God's own Holy Spirit. Yeah, you can pull my beard, that's okay. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we thank you for this little baby. We thank you for the love of her family and the love of you, Lord. And we ask that, uh, that you would just bless her with the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit so that she might become one of your children, adopted to be in your presence forever. And all of these things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our God, by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Yeah, now you're back to mama. Now you're back to mama. Let me ask you, will you do everything on your behalf 
to present the gospel for this family and for little Athena, that she might grow in grace and wisdom and love of the Lord. Uh, would you do everything that you can with God's help? Amen. So, Manya, who's our chair of our worship committee, has some gifts for you. The first one is the candle that, um, that we, we don't light here, but you can light at home. It has the date of the baptism on it, so you can right, remember thank you. it. Yes. God bless you. Thank you. And God bless you, Athena. You're welcome. Amen. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of my salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor, now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path, so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and not yet killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding an affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As fair exchange, I speak to, as to my children, open wide your hearts also. This is the word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity we have right now to seek your heart as we come to you in prayer. Thank you, Father, that the more time we spend with you in prayer, the more that our faithfulness grows. And as it grows, Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would guard it so it does not become like the faithfulness that Paul described of the early believers in Corinth. In the reading we just heard from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul was concerned about the emptiness of the Corinthians' faith. Not unlike many churches today, the Corinthian church was divided over a number of issues, and they did not get along well with each other. Paul urged them to open their hearts to one another and to love each other as a sign of their faith. Paul felt that failing to love one another led to accepting God's grace in vain. Father, sometimes we struggle to live faithful lives. Sometimes the grace that you give so freely has little effect on our lives just because of how we receive it. Instead of focusing on your grace, we become so distracted by things that fill up our lives and push you and your grace out. Our love for material possessions hinders our experience with your grace. Or at times, we are filled with anger. Maybe we are too judgmental or sometimes we are just unwilling to forgive. 
All these things limit the way we receive your grace. Forgive us, Father. Help us to live the kind of faith that Paul envisioned, a faith that by your grace supports us through every adversity. When we are sick or someone we love is sick, we have faith that your healing presence is right there, bringing us peace. We know that you comfort us when we grieve. We pray that the leaders of our country and our world would be guided by your wisdom. We need your presence, Father, in our workplaces and in our schools. Be with our churches. And hear us now as we lift together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning and happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. And just as importantly, happy Father's Day to our Heavenly Father. May we be still, even just in this hour of worship, and acknowledge him for who he is, God. Thank you for the perfect example that you've set before us, Heavenly Father. Now, I have a personal story I want to share with you. When my boys were little, I used to carry on either side of my wallet, and I still do, the most current picture that I would have of the boys, and then, along, and then Eric on the one side, and of course, Scotty on the other side. But then, what I would do is I'd have a $2 bill before they were married, I would have a $2 bill that I would have along that picture. And it would just be a reminder of me about how God brings two together as one. And there's a lot of symbolism to that number two, that, that we are second because only God can be number one. And then at our 40th wedding anniversary, we had a wonderful, the, the boys had a wonderful party for us, and they gave me a $2 bill. Just as a reminder, I had given the $2 bill that I carried and that I would pray over. I gave that to their wives at their wedding and told them about how God was bringing them together as one. And now from them, God would bless them with children. You know, there's a special bond between a mother and her children. But there's an equally special and I believe unique, I believe different relationship between a father and his children. And this is a very special bond, and the, our Heavenly Father gives us that perfect example of that. Setting that example, living in such a way, and, and, and setting that tone, and just as importantly, being that encouragement, holding us accountable and giving us the ability to do that. Well, our stewardship nugget this morning, that's exactly what it is. It's from First Chronicles, and it's King David. And he is now passing on that wisdom, that accountability, the example that he was blessed to set for his son, King Solomon. David also said to Solomon, his son, son, be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you until all of the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. Thank you, dear God, for the example that you give to us and the example that our fathers give to our children. Praise be to God.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the perfect example that you set for each of us. Thank you, dear God, for the blessing of life, life abundant, life to the full, life accountable to you, life eternal. And Father God, we pray that this hour of worship, that you will enable us to be still and to acknowledge you for who you are. Thank you, dear God. And it is in the precious name of your son, Jesus, that we give you this praise and this glory. And all of God's people say, amen.
Would you please stand with me for the hearing and the reading of this morning's gospel message that comes to us from Mark's gospel, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 35th verse and concluding with the 41st. Hear these words. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Then he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? And so ends this, the reading of his holy word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to be seated. And I invite you to pray along with me, please. God of grace, God of glory, God of promises and God of promises kept, we thank you always in every way for the gift of life we have in you. We thank you for the gift of your holy word, for your word shapes us and transforms us and informs us as to who it is that you are and who we are in you. So Lord, give us faith <clears throat> that can move mountains. Give us faith that we can understand. Give us faith and shape our lives so that we might be and become the people that you created us to be. People of faith, people of substance, people who stand firm in the midst of the storm. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. For it is in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Well, have you ever been in a storm that just came up like a flash? Uh, Last Sunday, they were getting ready to uh, have the 8.30 service outside. They had carted all the stuff out to the field, and they were just getting ready to worship when they looked up in the skies, and they were so dark. And I don't know if it started to rain yet, but it, it was threatening. And so, being of sound mind, they moved the service into the sanctuary. That's why they call it the sanctuary. It's, it's where we're safe. We're safe from the storm. Did you know that churches are intentionally built like an ark, like a boat, so that we're in the ark of the covenant, we're in the, under the grace of God, we have shelter in the eye of the storm. I've been in many storms in my life, and, and, and a lot of the storms are my own fault. Uh, you know, blundering into things that I shouldn't blunder into. And, and some of those our physical storms. There was a time that we were going on vacation in uh, Virginia, at uh, Virginia Beach. And we were heading down towards Virginia Beach and we were gonna meet our good friends, the Burnses there. And they were already there. And they had already set up and they were cooking a turkey. And we knew there was a hurricane, Hurricane Bob coming up the coast. And so we kept calling them, what's it like, what's it like? We're gonna stay over here inland and then we'll see you tomorrow. And they said, it's fine. There's, I said, aren't they asking you to evacuate? No, they just told us to hunker down. And I said, are you sure it sounds like that storm is coming right up the coast? No, you should come in. We have the turkey ready. We're going to have a big meal. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And so we got closer and closer. And, and, and it was just like I said, it was calm. It was beautiful. It was sunshiny. And, and, uh, and the sea, when we got there at, at Virginia Beach, was very calm, it was very nice. So we're having our turkey and we're out on the deck and all of a sudden comes this storm from, now we knew it was coming, 
but it took us by surprise the instantaneous nature of it when it took out one of the transformers down the road and all the power went out in the house and so we went inside and and uh, brought all the stuff in and and honkered down and and as we honkered down that storm came in very intensely and we were sitting right on the shore i mean we were right on the coast and we had this house that had these glass windows that were shaped like a, like a like a boat and they were anderson window walls and they were like on this side and on that side but in the midst of that storm my girls were in the bedroom with dotty and she was making sure that and that house was up on these stilts and the house was going like this and i'm thinking well i hope this house doesn't break off these stilts and I'm looking out into the storm, and all of a sudden I'm looking at the windows, and they had turned into sails. They were actually rounded. The glass was actually rounded, and I'm thinking, why doesn't that glass break? And why am I standing here in the midst of it? Because <laughs> if it breaks, I'm going to get killed. And so I'm praying to God, you know, Lord, I know I'm crazy. I know I brought my family here down in the middle of this storm, but I'm asking you to get us out of trouble. I'm asking you to prevent us from having any harm. See us through the eye of this storm. Help us to weather the storm. I'm trusting in you. Forgive me for putting my family in harm's way. I've been in all kinds of storms. And, and, and by the way, we weathered that storm. And the next day, everything was fine. We were swimming out in the ocean and things like that. Uh, and that's another story for another day. But we weathered the storm. I've been in storms. I've been in hurricanes. I've been in, in tornadoes. I've been in the vortex of a tornado, and God saw me through. In today's gospel, we have the disciples, seasoned fishermen. There's... They're in the boat, and Jesus had finished preaching to the crowd. He was already in the boat. He had gone into the boat so that he could preach out to the crowd, pull us out into the deeper water. And then he says to them, let us go to the other side. Why? Because there's more ministry to do over there, and Jesus isn't done ministering yet. But he's ministered to this crowd, and Jesus is human, and Jesus was tired because he had given everything of himself. Now you can ask Dottie on Sunday after church, after two services here, uh, I'll go home, I'll sit down on our couch, we'll put on like this old house or something like that, next thing you know, I'm, I'm gone. And I'm like worthless, ask Dottie, I am worthless on Sunday afternoon, there's nothing left. Everything is out, but there's a piece to it. There's a peace that comes with preaching. There's a peace that comes with uh, telling of God's word and God's grace. There's a peace that comes that's so satisfying, and it's the best rest you'll ever have. I, I talk about this with Don Scandal all the time. He says, it's just like amazing. It's just like, you're out. Jesus is out in the middle of this boat. He's at the back of the boat, the stern of the boat. He's sleeping on a cushion in the midst of of the storm. Can you sleep in the midst of a storm? You can if you have the peace of Christ in you. And Jesus is the peace of Christ. He's sleeping there on the cushion and the disciples, they're kicking them. Like, get up, Jesus! Don't you know we're about to drown? Don't you care? He does care. Jesus cares so much that he came down from heaven, took on human flesh, lives in our skin, and then he's going to pour himself out. He hasn't done it yet, but he's about to go to the cross. He's going to pour out all his life substance for you, for me, and for those disciples in the boat. Yes, he cares about their life. Yes, he cares not only about their life, but their eternal life, which is more important. Yesterday we had a wedding in here and the flowers here are from the wedding and uh, one of the things in the wedding 
Oh, they had this nice little picture. I put it over here. But it says, here and now, we vow to grow together. Here and now, we vow to grow together. That's what the disciples were doing. That's what we do when we come to church. We are God's people being built up into the temple of God. And, and as David said to David's son, Solomon, be strong and courageous and do the work. Even in the midst of the storm. So I'm talking to this couple yesterday. And we say that it's best to build your house on a solid rock on Jesus the Christ. Because when you build your house on him, you'll be able to weather every storm. When the storms come, and we are reading from the Gospels, when Jesus said, the man who is foolish builds his house on the sand, but the wise man builds his house on the solid rock. And when the storms come, and when the waves come, and when the rivers flow, in other words, not if, you're going to have storms in life. They are going to happen. But if we're standing firm in our faith, trusting in our eternal nature with God, there's no storm that can affect us. There's no storm that can overcome us. Oh, yeah, we can lose our life in the storm. I could have lost my life in that tornado. I could have lost my whole family down at Virginia Beach. God spared us that. But would we have been devastated? Yeah. Would we have lost our life? We could have. But would we be lost forever? No. Why? Because God's grace. Here are these disciples. They say, aren't you concerned that we're about to drown? Yeah. He gets up. He rebukes the wind. <laughs> quiet. He says to the sea, be quiet. It's calm. And now they're more afraid. Did you hear that? You know, the storm is over now. They were afraid for their lives. But after the quiet, after the storm is over, they were terrified, terrified, and asked each other, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Well, we know who he is. He's God in the flesh. He's the eternal being. He's the one that brought us all together into being. That's who he is. And he's going to give fully of himself so that we may live forever in him and have our being in him. But they don't fully comprehend that yet. Who is this that can calm the seas, that can calm the storms? Who is he? Well, they will come to learn who he is. And each one of those disciples in their day had a storm that ended with their life being lost, but not their eternal life. I was thinking about this, uh, this service this week, and I was reminded uh, of my good friend Don Scandrell and his dear wife, his first wife, Georgia Scandrell, who was given news that she had liver and pancreatic cancer, and she had four months to live. And in that church, we had had a man, his name is Tim, I won't tell you his last name, but Tim had cancer, and he was fighting cancer, and we decided to have a worship service for him, and we had the prayer team at the same time that we were, the men were gathering with this man for this worship service, an anointing of oils for healing, for miraculous healing, our prayer team was praying and asking for the same thing. And in the midst of their prayer, they felt this cold kind of wind come through them. And they all felt like Tim is healed. Meanwhile, we're talking with Tim, and Tim is telling us he is already healed because he knows who Jesus is. And that he had never been able to go through this storm of life 
beforehand because he didn't know Jesus at that time, but because of the men's group and because he was in the church and because he had faith in Christ, he knew that his eternity was secure and that his children would be okay and his wife would be okay. And Tim was healed physically. He was healed the very next day. He went into the Hillman Cancer Center. They were going to do these procedures. They had marked his whole body for, for uh, radiation and everything. And the doctor said to him, we can't find a single hot spot. In fact, we can't find your cancer anywhere. And Tim was healed. He's healed today. So it's around the same time, and Georgia's there, and she's got this liver impairment. And we're all, I'm in the choir at that time. I'm not a pastor. And we sang in the choir, and we actually put together a prayer song with our choir, praying for Georgia to be miraculously healed like Tim was. And on a Wednesday night, I'm sitting with Georgia at a Wednesday night dinner like we have here. And I said to her, you know, we have a prayer for you. And the choir has put together this prayer. And we're praying for a miracle for you. And we're expecting it. And she touched my hand like this. Tony, you're one of the good ones, she said. I said, one of the good ones? What's that mean? She says, you know, you love people. You have great faith. And you believe God does things. And God does do those things. And she says, I've been praying to God also. And I've been reading the scripture. And she said, you know what? I believe that this will end in my death. And it's okay. And I looked at her. I said, no, Georgia, we're praying for a miracle for you. And she said, no, Tony, listen. And she went to this verse that we heard today, this, this Mark piece where Jesus is asleep in the boat. And she said to me, as I was reading this, God spoke to me in my spirit and said, they were afraid for their life. But their eternal life was already secure. And so Jesus says to him, why don't you have faith still? Don't you know that you'll be okay? That you're in the grip of my grace? That you're the, in the grip of my eternal grace? That even if you lose your life, even though you die, yet shall you live? Don't you believe that? And I'm like, but, 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 Georgia. No. And she said, no, no, but, 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 but. It'll be okay. And she did lose her life. She didn't lose the battle, though. And she taught me God's grace in a way that I, someone who was facing certain death, praising God and accepting his grace in the midst of the storm. In the midst of the storm. And I thought, I've never seen faith like that before. And in the middle of the storms of my life, I think back on that, and it gives me the strength to go through. Because even if I don't make it through in this life, God has my eternity in the grip of his grace. He has your eternity in the grip of your grace. There's a song that we sing in the church. It is well with my soul. Uh, hymn number 377. Have you ever heard that song? That song was inspired by a guy who had lost four children, four daughters, in, in an ocean-going shipwreck. He had to stay behind. His family was going to London. And he was with D.L. Moody. He was doing some things with him. A very faithful man. And he had sent his family on ahead, and he was going to follow. And the ship that they were on was intersected by another ship, and it quickly sank. His wife was spared, and she sent him a famous telegram saying, saved alone. They lost their four children. And then later on, as he was taking a transatlantic voyage to be with his wife, in the same vicinity where that accident happened, he penned the words to the song as well, with my soul. And he just saw that his children, though he lost them, wasn't lost. That they were in the grip of God's grace and he 
and he loved that. And yet he missed his children, and his wife missed his children, but he gave us that song. And he talked about the sin that he had is nailed to the cross, that he doesn't have to worry about it anymore, and that's the truth for his daughters as well. In the midst of the storm, God is always there, whether we see him or not. I preach all the time at funerals about uh, Psalm 23, where David says that even though I'm in the valley of the shadow of death, David's saying to us, you know, because David did have God's spirit with him. He was an Old Testament person that God's spirit would be with. The Bible tells us that. But there was a time in his life where he couldn't sense God's spirit. And he says, even though I'm walked through the valley of the shadow of death, not knowing God's presence, not feeling God's presence, he says, I will not fear. Why? Because I know that God is with me. He knew that God's word was eternal. He knew that God was able. He knew that God was able to keep him for eternity. And at the end of David's life, he wasn't the perfect man, and he had gross sins in his life, but he had confessed them. And at the end of his life, the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart, that he lives in the eternity of the grip of God's grace. Not because he earned it, but because he received it. We all have that ability. In the midst of whatever storm you might find yourself within, God is with you. You are never alone. And he has prepared the way, the truth, and he is the life that we get to live. In the midst of the storm, God is always there with us. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, that is who you are. Almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving. And you are able to deliver us from certain death. You are able to deliver us into eternity. For you have prepared the way, the truth, and the life for us, O Lord. And we're thankful. Lord, you don't promise that we don't have storms in life. In fact, you promise that we will have storms. But that you are with us in the midst of the storm. That you will never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. And you will deliver us to the other side. All to your glory. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray these things. Amen. Our final hymn for uh, this morning is... Are ye able? What do you think? You think he's able? I think so.
So Donnie and I actually worshiped in a church that I will later on serve beginning August 1st. They didn't know we were coming. We actually showed up a little bit late. They had made an announcement about our coming. And, um, and then as they were doing joys and concerns, you know joys and concerns, you say a joy, someone says a concern. Uh, I raised my hand and one of the women that had met with me earlier in the week, her name is Pat, she looked at me and she thought, I know you, and, but she couldn't place where she knew me from. And we had masks on, so, uh, so I said, yeah, I'm your new pastor. <laughs> but we talked about, um, talked about benedictions, and we talked about how you leave the church. And, and I told them about this song that was written by Hannah Barch and, and, the, and the music that was provided by Dan Dausch. And I asked him if I could bring that there because it has a great meaning. Don't be afraid to share God's word. Don't be afraid to share his love. Don't be afraid even if you're facing uncertain times. In the Amen. midst of the storm, do not be afraid. Why? Because he's with you right in it. And as you show boldness and as you show faith, no matter what you're going through, people will be blessed. And they will know that your God truly is God all to his glory. And they said, yes, let us use that song. And I had already asked Hannah Barch and Dan if we could. We're going to really miss you guys. You're people of faith. You're rock solid people. But you know what? We all have storms we'll face one day. In the midst of the storm, know that God is with you. And we just sang the words, he is able to deliver you on the other side. Go in his peace, go in his love, and serve him always in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us in worship today. And remember, our prayer is that you would be blessed and strengthened by the power of Jesus Christ in your life, and that you would live a life of abundance and fellowship, joy, and liberty. Holiday Park Church is here for you, and we are more than the church. We are a fellowship of believers coming together to declare the glory of the Lord and celebrate Jesus as King. We study the Word, we practice what we learn, and in the process, we grow together, all to the glory of God. May God richly bless you.